Welcome everyone, I'm John Poley, your host of Bureau Briefings. Each month, we bring you insights directly inspired by the questions and interests of our clients. As registered attendees, you'll receive a link to this full webinar recording and a quick survey afterward. Your feedback gives us at the United States Gold Bureau a great in, uh, perspective on what topics you want to hear from. Absolutely. I'm thrilled to have Joshua Hoy, our core product manager here at the, the Bureau. I Welcome. appreciate it. Thank you for having me back. I know I am excited to get started with today's topic, but first, Josh, please let our viewers know a little bit about this place called the United States Gold Bureau. Absolutely. So at the United States Gold Bureau, we are the large, largest authorized numismatic bulk purchaser of U.S. mint products in the country. And we work with some of the more reputable refineries and mints across the globe. Now, as such, we can guarantee the authenticity, purity, and quality of every product that we offer. Now, we're an authorized dealer for NGC and PCGS. And the United States Gold Bureau's parent company, Lone Star Tangible Assets, was awarded full state compliance and oversight on the Texas Bullion Depository. The Texas Bullion Depository is the first and only state-administered precious metal storage facility in the country. And uh, since 2003, we've been able to help protect over $2 billion worth in precious metals assets for our clients. Now, John, would you like to uh, want to run us through today's format real that quick? That would be great. We're, uh, I, I promise we're going to switch it up just a little bit because uh, there's so much content to cover here. Normally, it's 20 minutes and uh, some time to ask questions as you get them. Uh, got a little bit of a more important topic today. Exactly. <laughs> uh, before we dive in, I want to clarify that while we will be discussing policies and economic implications, we are not tax professionals. Uh, if you have a specific tax related question, we always recommend consulting a qualified tax expert for personalized advice. Here's the roadmap for today's session. First, we'll address the question from last month, giving insight about the possibility of government repossession of gold. After that, we'll explore what could be on the horizon with the 47th pre uh, president of the United States. Donald J. Trump. Mm -hmm. Now, as we examine policies, we'll touch on both the opportunities and potential hurdles ahead. These aren't predictions, they're perspectives to consider as you think about safeguarding and growing your wealth in a dynamic economic landscape. It's a complex time with a lot of moving parts, but there's also a lot of opportunity. And we're here to help make sense of it all so you can feel more confident about your financial strategy moving forward. All right, let's jump into our first topic. We received a question from one of you asking whether the government still has the power to seize private gold holdings. So Josh, can you walk us through what Executive Order 6102 was all about? Happy to. Now, John, Executive Order 6102 was a pivotal chapter in US economic history and one that still resonates with anyone interested in protecting their wealth. Now, in 1933, during the Great Depression, President Franklin D. Roosevelt issued this executive order requiring Americans to turn in their privately held gold to the government. The stated goal was to stabilize the economy by increasing the government's gold reserves, which at the time backed the value of the U.S. dollar. Essentially, the order aimed to give the government more control over currency by consolidating as much gold as possible under federal control. Americans who handed over their gold received compensation, but it was at a set price of $20.67 per ounce, a rate much lower than what gold would soon be valued at after the government revalued it. It was a powerful reminder of how government policy can directly impact personal assets and ultimately financial security. So Josh, would you say that Executive Order 6102 was really about consolidating power over the currency? You know, by pulling gold out of private hands, the government effectively strengthened its ability to control the economy and, by extension, the lives of everyday Americans. Well, that's a great point, John. Uh, it was a dramatic move, but it underscores an important point. So in times of economic crisis, governments can and do take bold actions. And while something as sweeping as Executive Order 6102 is unlikely to happen to today, uh, it's a reminder of why people look to precious metals as a way to diversify and protect wealth. Now, an interesting detail with Order 6102 is while most forms of gold were subject to repossession, certain types of collectible or certified gold coins were exempt. This added and uh, created an added layer of protection for those who held these specific assets. 
Today, we see investors diversifying their portfolios with these certified coins as a hedge, knowing that they carry not only intrinsic value, but also historical protection against government seizure. Thanks, Josh. Uh, now that we've covered how past government actions have impacted precious metal ownership, it's easy to see why many investors are looking at gold and silver as a way to shield their wealth in times of uncertainty. So let's shift to the bigger picture. Absolutely, we'd be happy to. Uh, with Donald J. Trump serving as the 47th president, we're already seeing signs of what his administration priorities will mean for the economy. There's a lot of ground to cover from jobs and wages to taxes and energy, government spending, all of which directly impact the value of the dollar and the case for holding precious metals. Let's start with immigration and border policy. Joshua, this has been a major focus for the Trump administration with strong emphasis on tightening border controls and revisiting immigration policies. Mm -hmm. How might these changes affect the broader economy and what implications could this have for precious metals? Well, uh, it's a great starting point, John. Uh, immigration policy, especially under a more restrictive approach, has far reaching effects on the labor market and overall economic growth. Tighter border control and a more stringent immigration policies could reduce the availability of labor in certain industries, especially those that rely heavily on immigrant workforces like agriculture, construction, and hospitality. With potential labor shortages, we could see a rise in wages as employers compete for a smaller pool of workers, driving up costs. And as wage pressures mount, that often leads to higher uh, consumer prices, which can fuel inflation. Precious metals have historically performed well during inflationary periods as investors look to protect their purchasing power from the eroding effects of inflation on fiat currency. Interesting. So changes in immigration policy could actually put upward pressure on inflation, which could in turn make precious metals a more attractive asset. You know, that's a great point. Uh, when we see inflation rise due to labor shortages or wage pressures, the purchasing power of the dollar tends to decrease. <laughs> And when that happens, people naturally start looking for ways to preserve their wealth outside of traditional currency. Precious metals like gold and silver become particularly attractive because they've maintained value across economic cycles and have a history of acting as a hedge against inflation. What's more, if businesses experience higher costs due to labor shortages or increased wages, they often pass those costs on to consumers. This further impacts the cost of goods, reinforcing inflation and weakening the dollar's buying power. In these scenarios, gold and silver don't just serve as safe haven assets. They become essential tools for wealth preservation, offering stability when fiat currency may fluctuate in value. So while immigration policy might not directly impact precious metals, the ripple effect it creates through inflation and dollar volatility absolutely strengthens the case for holding assets like gold and silver in a diversified portfolio. That's a powerful point, Josh. So we see that the economic ripple effects from policy changes can lead to increased demand for precious metals as a safe harbor. Mm -hmm. Now let's shift to jobs growth and wages, another central focus. Trump's platform has placed big emphasis on bringing jobs back to American soil and bolstering wages for American workers. Mm -hmm. Josh, I wanna know your take on how this could impact the economy and by extension, the demand for precious metals. Right. Well, job growth and wages are central to Trump's economic vision and his focus on bringing more manufacturing back to American soil has the potential to strengthen our domestic economy in a very tangible way. By incentivizing companies to keep production stateside, we could see a real boost in job creation across sectors like manufacturing, technology and infrastructure. As more jobs become available, American spending power increases, which can spur economic growth from the ground up. Increased wages are also a positive factor. They can improve quality of life for millions and encourage stronger consumer spending, which supports a healthy economy. Now, with growth like this, there are sometimes natural side effects, like rising prices as businesses adjust to higher labor costs. While these rising costs may lead to moderate inflation, the overall impact can be a stronger economy and a workforce with greater stability. For investors, this environment of economic growth and moderate inflation often underscores the value of diversifying with precious metals like gold and silver. 
These assets hold their value across economic cycles and can offer a stable hedge if inflationary pressures start to build over time. It sounds like Trump's approach to jobs and wages could set that strong foundation for economic growth while also highlighting the value of diversification with precious metals. That's very well said. Now let's move on to energy. Trump has expressed strong support for expanding domestic oil and gas production. What could that mean for the U.S. economy and for those invested in precious metals? Oh, that's a good question, John, because energy independence has long been a priority for Trump. And by ramping up domestic oil and gas production, there's a real opportunity to boost economic growth while reducing our reliance on foreign energy sources. When we increase our energy production, it often leads to lower energy costs domestically, benefiting everything from manufacturing to transportation and ultimately keeping consumer prices in check. Lower energy costs mean that businesses can operate more efficiently and households have more disposable income to spend elsewhere, which is positive for economic growth. If energy production really takes off, the impact could be significant with jobs created in energy rich regions and a more resilient economy overall. If we encounter periods of volatility in global energy prices or inflationary pressures, gold and silver stand as reliable assets to hold. Precious metals can act as a safeguard in a strong economy, providing stability in case of unexpected shifts in dollar or energy costs. So we're all seeing how Trump's energy policies might lead to more domestic stability and a boost in economic resilience. Mm -hmm. Uh, with precious metals offering that added layer of security for investors. It's good to have. Josh, could you share some examples from Trump's first term uh, that might help illustrate what we could expect next year in a second term? Yeah, we have some. So Trump's first term provides some solid examples of how a strong focus on energy independence can support economic resilience. During his first presidency, the U.S. saw a substantial expansion in domestic oil and gas production, which helped position us as a net exporter of energy for the first time in decades. This not only reduced our reliance on foreign energy, but also created thousands of jobs in energy producing states, boosting regional economies and providing more stability in energy pricing. When we increase our own energy output, we're less vulnerable to global market fluctuations. That domestic stability helps keep energy costs steady, benefiting both businesses and households. In a strong energy environment like this, economic resilience grows and the dollar tends to hold its strength as well. Uh, however, should there be any shifts or volatility in global energy markets, gold and silver continue to offer investors a stable, time-tested hedge. During Trump's first term, for example, gold and silver continued to offer uh, investors a stable, time-tested hedge in response to global trade dynamics and geopolitical tensions. Precious metals performed well during those uncertain periods, reinforcing their value as assets that can balance portfolios and help investors navigate a range of market conditions. So if Trump's policies once again bolster domestic energy production, we may see renewed economic strength and job creation. Precious metals, meanwhile, provide a complementary safeguard offering both resilience and peace of mind in an evolving economic landscape. Well, thanks again, Josh. So looking back, uh, Trump's energy focus did contribute to economic resilience and position the U.S. as a more independent energy powerhouse. Mm -hmm. uh, precious metals then come in and add as an extra layer of security, supporting wealth preservation through times of growth and potential volatility alike. They do. Now, I'd like to shift into a topic that's at the forefront for every investor, a word we've heard way too much the last few years, inflation. Mm -hmm. With rising prices impacting nearly every corner of the economy, uh, Trump's approach to tackling inflation is top of mind. Josh, from what we know of his strategies and priorities, what can we realistically expect from Trump's approach to inflation in this next term? And how might that influence the demand for precious metals? Well, John, inflation is one of the biggest economic concerns today, and Trump's approach to it will likely draw on several strategies, some of which we saw in action during his first term. One core element of his strategy is promoting domestic production, particularly in manufacturing and energy. By reducing reliance on imported goods and producing more domestically, 
Trump aims to bring down supply chain costs and in turn stabilize consumer prices. Back in his first term, for example, Trump's push for energy independence helped drive down fuel prices, which positively impacted inflation by lowering transportation and production costs across various industries. Now, if he maintains this focus, increased domestic energy production could help curb some inflationary pressures we're seeing now. Another key element is Trump's emphasis on reducing regulatory burdens for businesses. Less red tape often means lower costs for producers, which can keep prices in check and reduce inflationary pressures. This was a major focus in his first term where he signed executive orders aimed at cutting down on regulations across industries. By keeping operational costs lower for businesses, we can expect less upward pressure on prices, at least on the supply side. So by reducing reliance on imports and cutting regulatory costs, Trump is essentially aiming to address inflation at its sources, mm -hmm. uh, whether it's energy or production. Uh, but what about monetary policy? That's a big deal. Uh, mm -hmm. Are there any challenges or potential areas of concern in how his administration might work with the Federal Reserve to manage inflation. Yeah, it's gonna be tough. Now, uh, while Trump's administration doesn't directly control the Federal Reserve, his influence certainly impacted its direction. During his first term, Trump was vocal about encouraging the Fed to maintain low interest rates, arguing that it would stimulate economic growth. However, as we know, keeping rates too low for too long can fuel inflation if the economy overheats. Now, going forward, Trump's policies may indirectly put pressure on the Fed, especially if he continues to prioritize rapid uh, growth and job creation. If the Fed were to respond with higher interest rates to control inflation, we could see some impacts on borrowing costs for businesses and consumers. Now, this could create a balancing act between fostering economic growth and keeping inflation in check. So for investors, this is where precious metals come into play. If inflationary pressures persist, or if the dollar weakens as a result of complex economic factors, gold and silver become valuable assets to hold. They have historically retained their purchasing power, especially when inflation is on the rise, acting as a solid hedge against currency vol uh, volatility. So Trump's approach seems to have multiple layers, promoting domestic production, reducing regulatory costs, and encouraging policies that stimulate growth. Mm -hmm. But if inflation does start to climb, precious metals provide that reliable net for investors. Now let's dig into the impact on goods and services. As we've seen, tariffs are a major factor here, affecting everything from production costs to pricing. Josh, could you walk us through how Trump's tariff strategy might impact the cost of goods and services? And ultimately, what does that mean for the American jobs and the economy? Uh, of course, John, tariffs play a crucial role in Trump's strategy to strengthen domestic manufacturing, and they have a direct impact on the costs of goods and services. Mm -hmm. In his first term, Trump imposed tariffs on various imports, particularly from countries like China, aiming to level the playing field for American businesses. The immediate effect of those tariffs is to make imported goods more expensive, which can lead to higher prices for consumers on certain items. But there's more to this story. The goal behind these tariffs is to encourage companies to bring manufacturing back to the United States. Now, but when tariffs make it more expensive to produce goods offshore, many businesses start looking at domestic production as a more viable, cost-effective option. This cycle of increasing offshore operating costs by design creates an incentive for companies to invest in American facilities, create American jobs, and reduce our reliance on imported goods. During Trump's first term, we saw this impact in sectors like steel, aluminum, and electronics manufacturing, where companies responded to tariffs by opening or expanding operations in the United States. This not only helps create jobs, but can also increase wages, given the higher labor standards in the U.S. As more manufacturing returns, the economy benefits from a more resilient supply chain, less vulnerable to international disruptions or pricing pressures. Exactly. Tariffs are part of the larger vision, mm -hmm. not only for correcting trade imbalances, but for bringing critical jobs and manufacturing back to the United States. By raising the cost of offshore production, Trump's policies encourage companies to invest here, mm -hmm. reducing our dependency on foreign manufacturing and building a more self-sustaining economy. 
Now we're seeing real world examples that highlight the need for this kind of shift. Take the recent news around union holdups and disruptions in our supply chains, like the recent instance where union leaders delayed shipments by holding up crates. While this specific action wasn't intended to emphasize the need for domestic manufacturing, it does showcase the vulnerabilities we face when we rely too heavily on foreign supply chains and logistics. If companies bring their operations back to the United States, it doesn't just mean jobs. It also means fewer chances for disruptions from outside forces like foreign logistic issues or labor disputes. But as you mentioned, Josh, with tariffs potentially leading to higher costs for some imported goods, what can we expect in terms of inflation and how do precious metals play a role for investors here? Well, those are great points, John. This shift you know, helps secure our supply chain and reduces the risk of price hikes tied to external factors from labor disputes abroad to global logistics bottlenecks. Mm -hmm. Uh, the goal is to create an economy where prices are less affected by global uncertainty, uh, which has a stabilizing effect on inflation in the long run. Now, during this transition period, as companies move production and recalibrate, there may be inflationary pressures. Uh, this is where precious metals, especially gold and silver, offer investors a strong hedge. Now, in times of inflation, these metals historically preserve value, providing a buffer against currency fluctuations and giving investors a tangible asset that holds its worth even when other assets may fluctuate. So Trump's tariff policies, while bringing some initial adjustments, are ultimately about building a more uh, stable, self-reliant economy. Precious metals fit well within that vision, giving investors confidence and protection on a changing economic landscape. Absolutely, Josh. It is clear that Trump's focus on domestic production supported by tariffs aims to strengthen our economy and add stability to supply chains. Mm -hmm. And for investors, as we've covered, precious metals provide valuable layer of security throughout these shifts. Mm -hmm. Taxes have a significant impact on both businesses and the individuals, and Trump's approach will likely differ quite a bit from the previous administration. Mm -hmm. Josh, could you give our viewers an overview of Trump's tax strategy. How might it impact domestic and foreign businesses as well as individual taxpayers? And what are the key differences we can expect compared to President Biden, Biden's pre presidency? Yeah, well, I can go over it, but before we dive in, just a reminder to everyone, uh, we're not tax experts. And for any specific tax advice, it's always best to consult a tax professional. Now, Trump's tax approach prioritizes pro-business incentives, and lower taxes for both corporations and individuals with the aim of spurring economic growth and making the U.S. an attractive place to do business. For businesses, Trump's tax plan leans heavily on cuts and credits for corporations that operate domestically. For instance, we might see renewed reductions in corporate tax rates and further incentives for companies that bring jobs back to the United States soil or establish new operations domestically. Now, this differs from Biden's approach, which focused on increasing corporate tax rates and closing certain tax breaks, particularly for large corporations. By lowering corporate taxes and offering incentives for U.S.-based operation, Trump's policies aim to make it economically favorable for businesses to invest here. For foreign businesses, Trump has historically taken a tougher stance with policies that discourage offshoring and encourage investment in the United States. This approach could mean tariffs or tax adjustments for foreign companies selling into the U.S. market, essentially leveling the playing field for American firms and reducing incentives to manufacture abroad. On the individual side, we're likely to see a continuation of lower tax rates across various income brackets with particular benefits for middle income earners and possibly additional tax breaks for investments or retirement savings. Now, in contrast, Biden's policies emphasize tax increases on higher income earners and capital gains. Trump's approach by reducing the tax burden on individuals and businesses alike is focused on increasing disposable income, which could boost consumer spending and fuel further economic growth. Now, for example, in 2017, Trump's Tax Cuts and Jobs Act, Act lowered income tax rates across most uh, brackets, allowing many Americans to keep more of their earnings. For middle income families, 
This resulted in an immediate boost in disposable income, which in turn supported consumer spending. Now, under the TCGA, the standard deduction was nearly doubled as well, which provided significant tax relief and simplified filing for households by reducing the need for itemized deductions. Another area we saw impactful changes was the child tax credit, which was doubled from 1,000 to 2,000 per qualifying child. This provided substantial additional relief to families, allowing more parents to reinvest in their homes, save for education, or bolster their retirement funds. Additionally, Trump's tax policy lowered the rate for pass-through entities, which many small business owners use this business income, effectively boosting take-home pay for millions of small business owners. Compared to Biden's policies, which included tax increases on high-income earners and capital gains, Trump's approach focuses on across-the-board tax reductions, particularly for middle-class and small business owners. By reducing the tax burden on individuals, the goal is to drive economic activity from the ground up, putting more money directly into consumers' hands and boosting overall economic resilience. All right, that was a lot. And <laughs> we've touched on the economic impact of immigration taxes and tariffs. Mm -hmm. Now let's get into government-funded programs. Okay a hot topic with major financial implications for taxpayers. Under Biden's administration, government spending has surged in several areas uh, with programs and policies that some view as driving inflation and eroding the dollar strength. Josh, let's dive into what programs have had a particularly heavy impact, how much has been spent, and what Trump's 2024 campaign suggests he would do differently. Absolutely, John. So let's start with some of the high impact numbers. So under Biden, government spending has expanded significantly, particularly in areas like immigration management, social welfare programs and climate initiatives. For instance, uh, the Biden administration's handling of the micro crisis has become a massive expenditure, including resources for the CBP one app, a system designed to streamline asylum and border processing. Reports indicate that the U.S. has allocated substantial resources to manage the migrant crisis and costs associated with border and immigration management have soared as high as $23 billion annually, accounting for expanded processing facilities, staffing, and technological support. This has been viewed as an unsustainable burden on taxpayers, particularly when the impacts are felt at the local level. In contrast, Trump, uh, Trump's vision for the future would likely focus on reducing the strain by tightening immigration policies and reducing spending on mig migrant programs with an emphasis on strict border enforcement to lower these off, uh, ongoing costs. Now, social welfare spending has also seen a large increase. For example, Biden expanded programs like SNAP and Medicaid to offer broader assistance during the pandemic. While helpful in times of crisis, many argue that these expansions have now overstayed their emergency purpose. Trump's proposed policies signal a rollback with a focus on incentivizing work and decreasing dependency on federal aid, which would reduce this burden on a federal budget. Another area where we've seen major spending is climate initiatives with billions allocated under Biden's Inflation Reduction Act toward renewable energy subsidies and environmental programs. Now, Trump's approach would likely scale back such spending, prioritizing traditional energy sources and cutting subsidies that don't deliver immediate economic returns, effectively curtailing government costs that have been criticized as inflationary. Now, in terms of overall spending, Biden's policies have added trillions to the national debt, which weakens the dollar over time and has ripple effects on inflation. Trump's return is a path to potential fiscal restraint with a vision to trim back programs that don't directly support American jobs or economic growth. For investors, this makes a strong case for holding assets like precious metals as the dollar faces pressure from current spending levels. You know, thanks for breaking all that down. This is uh, like competing with the new shows <laughs> out there. This is a lot of great content, Josh. Mm -hmm. uh, it's clear that Trump's potential policies would mark a significant shift from the current administration mm -hmm. uh, with the focus of reducing spending and protecting the dollar. And as we've discussed today, in times of economic change, the stability and security of assets like precious metals have never been more important. Can agree more. 
Uh, at the U.S. Gold Bureau, we don't just talk about stability, we stand on it. We're so confident in the value of these investments that we offer a 100% buyback guarantee. Josh, could you take a minute and walk our viewers through what this guarantee means and why it sets us apart? Yeah, absolutely. So at the United States Gold Bureau, we have a 100% buyback guarantee on all the assets that we provide. If you do business with us, we will do business with you. So bullion can be liquidated at a market value anytime. And for qualifying investment grade that's held for five years or more, our consignment program is a great option that you can always opt for an immediate bid price in emergencies. I'd like to point out at the usgoldbureau.com, we have more information on this exclusive program for our clients. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Josh, for all the valuable insight today. I appreciate it. Thank you everyone who joined us. Uh, a lot of you came in while we were actually in the middle of the webinar and we will be sending you the full recording after this. Mm -hmm. We covered a lot of ground from the Gold Repossession Act, how Trump's policies could impact the economy to why precious metals remain a smart choice for safeguarding your wealth. You're absolutely right, John. Uh, the markets and the economy will always ebb and flow, but the right investments are those that hold strong across all cycles. Precious metals have done that time and time again, providing a foundation of security that you can rely on. Well said. I couldn't agree more. 24 hours after this live webinar, check your email. Uh, we're going to have a link mm -hmm. uh, for the full recording and a link to all of our past web webinars. Uh, if you have a pen handy, you can contact us at 1-800-775-3504 to speak with one of our precious metal specialists. Again, that phone number is one 800 775-3504. If you did ask a question on the webinar today, we'll be sure to get that over to one of our precious metal specialists to reach out to you promptly during business hours. Josh, that was an amazing presentation today. Appreciate it. Appreciate everyone joining us and appreciated the info. And we love seeing these growing audiences. We'll see you next month on another topic that you help us choose. All right, take it Thanks, easy, everyone. everyone.